So welcome once again for the second session of uh, the webinar series, Akikad Now for Engineers. Uh, so in the last session, we were seeing how to set up the project in Archicad for creating the structural BIM model uh, based on the information that we get from the architectural team. Uh, so in this session, which is the second session, we'll be seeing how to generate the structural model, uh, not just the structural model, but also generating the uh, structural analytical model uh, based on the Archicad model, structural Archicad model, uh, and how we can use that information uh, for the further processes. We'll be seeing it today. Okay, so without any delay, let's get started. So I'll just go ahead and show a demo on how to create the structural uh, model inside Archicad. Okay, so uh, as I was showing last week, I have uh, referenced the Archicad model into the reference layout here in my layout book. You can see the first story I have referenced from the architectural model. And then the second second story, and then the site information, which is oriented in north direction, and also a section from the Archie model for developing my uh, structural BIM model. Okay, so these are the references which can also be submitted for approval when you're sub uh, when you're submitting your structural model. Okay, so going back to the view map, I just go to the first story you can see here, I've already created my grid and the boundaries here. Okay. So now I just need to reference my uh, first story, the R key first story, which is in my layout book. And then right click here to choose so as trace reference. Okay. So if the model is, uh, or if the drawing is in different location, you can choose the option here and then drag the reference uh, based on the grid we can reference and then bring it to right location okay which i've done earlier to save some time okay so now uh, having referenced the r key first story in my first story of structural bim model uh, i can start drawing my components okay so for that uh, i just go to section first and then I will reference my section one here, show as trace reference. And I can see my uh, section drawing here as the reference. So if it is again uh, placed in a different location, you can just drag the reference using this option here. Okay. So as you can see here, uh, we first have a foundation wall around the building, which is this one. And I just need to check the height of it. So for that, I'm going to use the measure tool. Start measuring from here. And then it's 1200 mm. So I'll go back to my structural first story and then start modeling it. So this is the outer uh, foundation wall, okay? So for that, I'm choosing the wall tool in the toolbox under design. And then I, I'm going to change the settings here slightly. For that, I'm going to settings dialog. Instead here, I'm just choosing uh, not linked. And then I'm going to make the top link as zero. And then the bottom one is minus 1200. Okay. And also I'm checking whether the structural function is structural load bearing element, uh, the load bearing element. So I'll talk about this a bit later, but this, but just it is available here, I'm just informing. Okay, so click okay here, and then uh, I'm good to go. I just want 250 mm thickness. And then uh, I just choose a structural concrete prefab here. And then click okay. So, but before that, I just choose the geometry method to be rectangular okay so by just clicking the two points i can draw four uh, walls okay so i'm choosing the starting point and then going to the diagonally opposite end here okay so yeah i just click continue 
let me go to the uh, 3D and check whether my model is visible. So as I can see here, there is a problem. Just I'll just see here. Okay. Okay, this should be zero. Okay. Yeah. So now my structural, uh, the foundation wall has been drawn. I'll go back to 2D and then I have to draw the outer slab. Okay. So I'm just zooming out here and then choosing the slab tool. So I just want 80 mm thick. And then I choose reinforced concrete structural is okay for me. And then I choose our uh, rectangular in geometry method and then choose the corner points, which is the same as the wall, which we draw uh, drew earlier. So again, I go to the 3D and then check whether my model is okay. Okay, it looks okay. I just change the material. Maybe I change this to generic structural or uh, concrete structural, yeah. Okay, just for differentiating, I'm changing it to different uh, material, but both are just structural concrete. Uh, Okay, so going back to first story, I just need to create a hole because I, as I told, it's just the outer wall. I mean, outer slab, I'm going to create an inner slab again. So for creating the hole, uh, I just select the slab, which I drew earlier, and then select the uh, edge. When I select the edge, so in from the pet palette, you can choose subtract from polygon tool. Okay, so you can start drawing the whole dimension. I'm just choosing the first point and then the diagonally opposite the end of it. Okay, you can see here, I've created a hole in between and then I'm just click, uh, clicking escape and I want to create a new slab now. So for that, I'm clicking the slab tool and then giving an option uh, thickness of 150 mm, which is going to be inside the building, okay? So which is again the home story is first story and then again the geometry method is rectangular and then i can just go ahead and draw it okay okay so i'm just going to 3d to check if everything is okay as you can see here i have uh, outer slab and also i have uh, inner slab Okay, which is going to be inside the building, which is slightly thicker than the outer one. You can see from here, okay? So going back to the first story, I have few openings here, again, inside the inner slab, uh, which is the stairwell and some uh, uh, elevator uh, openings. So I have to create the opening. For that, again, I choose the slab and then choose the edge. And from the pet palette, make sure you have uh, a subtract from polygon tool activated and then go here and start drawing your hole. Okay. Yeah. I also have an opening here. So I just use the same option. And then I created the opening here. Okay. Let me check it in 3D. You can see the opening that I've created just now. Okay, going back to the first story, I'll start placing my columns here. Okay. So for that, I'm choosing the column tool. And I need to choose the correct structure. Uh, I'm choosing the profile structure and then choosing HEB 240 from the list available. Okay, so here I'm just having it as a bottom link as first story and the top link as second story. And make sure all the settings are fine. Okay, so it looks everything is fine. I just click OK and then start placing my columns here. Okay, so first I'll place the column along one of the grids 
and then uh, I'll drag multiple copies from there. Okay. Yeah, so now that I've placed all my columns. Okay, so I'll just choose the column tool and then click Control A. So I'll select all the columns available on this view. And then I choose the anchor point. And make sure the drag option, drag tool is chosen in the pet palette. Okay, and then click Control Alt to drag multiple copies. Okay, so I'm just going to the second grid. The third one. And then the final one. Okay, so now I have placed all my columns, but I need to remove two columns from here. which is not in the uh, reference drawing. Okay, so now I've removed those and then going back to 3D, I can check the column here. Okay, so now I've created the column and I'll, I'll create the walls now. Okay, so again, I'm choosing the wall tool in the design toolbox and then go to the settings. Um, now I need to link it to the top story and then make this zero and also this zero okay and it's again 250 mm thick i'll go ahead and start drawing my uh, wall okay so again uh, make sure you are having the ge geometry method rectangular and then choose the opposite corner okay so I also have inner walls here. So for that, I'm again choosing the wall tool and then using the straight geometry method. And then I'm drawing the inner walls. So now I've created my inner walls also. I'll go back to 3D and make sure everything is fine. So here I can create the uh, door opening for that, I'm going to the opening tool here. And then uh, I enter maybe 300, uh, 3000, and 1200 width. Okay. So I choose the anchor point and then I place it somewhere here. Uh, in reality, you should be placing it exactly in the location in which the uh, your, your door comes. And I'm just placing it for demo purpose here. Okay, so now that all my uh, uh, first story components are placed, I can go ahead to the go ahead and copy this and place it in the other stories because all the stories are having the same components. Okay, so for that, I'm just choosing the inner portion, just leaving out the outer uh, slab and the outer foundation wall. Okay, so I've chosen everything from here and then just click Control C. Okay, and then I'm going to Story Two and then clicking control v you can see a moving dashed line here uh, i can just click anywhere outside to confirm the location okay so just see it on 3d i just go here go to 3d you can check uh, the changes okay having done that i just go back to second story now i need to place the uh, beams on my first story okay so for that I'm choosing the beams tool and I'm going to the settings and make sure everything is correct. Okay. And then click OK. Okay. So currently I'm in second story, but this story beam is going to be placed on the first story. So I'm choosing the home story as first story here, which is the current story minus one. Okay. So I'll start drawing my beams here. Okay, so I've drawn my first beam. After this, I will just copy paste 
which is uh, by dragging control all to place multiple uh, copies okay Okay, so this is the last one. So now I have all the beams here. So now I need to copy it to the other grid. Okay, so again, I'm using the drag tool, control alt to place multiple copies and then place it exactly where you want it. Okay, so I've placed one. Okay, so now I have drawn my horizontal uh, beams. Now I need to create the vertical ones. So again, choosing the beam, choose the anchor point, first anchor point. Now I need to, uh, I can choose the geometry method as chain because it's going to be continuous beam. Okay. Just need to be careful while choosing the anchor point. Okay, so the last one I'm just right clicking and clicking OK. Okay, so now I can drag multiple copies from here. So I'm again using the same drag tool on the bed palette. Click Control Alt and then place it on different grids. Okay. Okay, so in order to check this, I just go to 3D and you can see here on the first story, the beams are all drawn. Okay, so going back to second story, I just zoom out to select only the components that I want to copy from here. So I'm choosing all the beams, columns, walls, and slabs, which is in the inner portion. Okay, so again, control C, and go to third story and do control V. Just click paste. Okay. Again, control V. And then in the roof level, I just place here, but I will delete the uh, column and wall later. Okay. Continue. So I'll just go to 3D here. So in the roof level, I don't want all the columns and uh, walls. So I just go ahead and delete this. Okay. So here you can see the opening here, but I don't want this opening. So for that, I can go back to roof level and then select the slab here and then choose the edge that I want to remove. and then use this offset edge tool. So with that, I just need to bring that edge to the opposite side so that the opening will be removed automatically. Okay, so same method I'm following to remove the edge or remove the opening. Okay, so now if I go to the first story for uh, structural purposes, we may not have all the slabs so I think I can remove the trace reference here. Okay. So for the structural purposes, we uh, may not have all the slab, you know, drawn as one slab. We we have to model it bay by bay or the span by span. So for that, we can split the slabs by selecting this and then choosing the split option here, and then I can split it based on the grid line here. Okay. So now uh, these two are split, and for this span i can give different material or i can give different strength uh, grade of concrete or uh, different reinforcements 
So for that purposes, we can split the uh, slabs to multiple spans. Okay, again, I'm splitting it here horizontally. Okay, so for, for representing the slabs that are split, I can just choose the model view option structural here. So you can see that the slabs or uh, the split slabs are clearly visible. But the earlier view, if I you know hide the grid, you can clearly see it. Let me first hide the grid. Yeah, you can see the split slabs here individually. But in uh, architectural uh, representation, you may not need the split or uh, for that purpose, you can just use the plans here, it, which will remove the uh, lines. So for that, you just go to the model view options and use the eliminate option under slab, okay? So if you want to show lines, you can show, or if you want to eliminate, you can eliminate. You can also use the hidden lines, okay? Something like this. So for now, I just, uh, eliminate under plans and for structural I just show show lines and click OK. Okay, so this is the way you can you know uh, represent the same slab for different purposes. Uh, now that uh, my model is almost ready. Okay, so I also have basement level and the bottom level which I'm not drawing it now because it's just the same as what I did now. But before that I'll just go to section. Um, so here you can see that there is a C-shaped members on this side, on the other side also. So now I'm going to draw this, okay? So for that, I'm just going to the third story. I want to reference the drawing below and then choose the beam tool. Okay, so make sure it is uh, geometry method is single and then the settings are uh, right. Okay, so I hope everything is fine. I just go ahead and draw the beam here. I need to choose the outer edge and then I'm drawing one beam and then I'm going to draw one more beam which is the slanting beam, which I'll be editing it in section. So going to section here, you can see there is the, the this is the beam that I drew now. Okay, so if I select it, I have one and the other one which is not selected. Okay. So now I need to adjust the length of this by just using the stretch length option on the pet palette. So using that, Okay, uh, after placing it on the right uh, length, I just go to the settings and then use the option here to slant the end, which is 107.5 degrees. Okay, so my uh, edge is slanted now. So now I have to work with the other beam. For that, first let me rotate it by minus 35 degree. And then uh, I need to uh, do the ends, which is 72.5 degree. And the other end is just straight. Okay, and click okay. Okay, now I need to move it to the right location. So for that, I'm using the drag tool. Okay. And then I'm using the stretch uh, with pitch option here to change the length, okay? Now that I've drawn both the beams, I need to draw the bottom beam. For that, I'm just copying the same by just using the drag option and clicking control to drag one copy. Okay, choose drag and click control to drag one copy below. So after copying it below, I will change the orientation. Okay, so I change it to 35 degree, which is which was minus 35 degree earlier, 
and then make my edges straight on both the ends. Now I need to move it to the right location. So using the drag tool, I'm moving it to the right location. After moving, I need to uh, stretch the edges to, you know, uh, you know, balance the length. Okay. Now I go to 3D and you can see the uh, beams here. Now I have to create my uh, slab, I mean, sorry, the column. For that, I'm just going to story one and then using the column tool here. And I need to have the top link not linked. And then also I have to rotate my column by 90 degree. Okay, so I just place it here. Okay, so I will go back to the section. You can see the column here, which is in red color. So first I will adjust the height of both uh, ends by using the stretch height tool. Okay, so now I need to increase the height and then link it with the slanting beam above. Okay, so after that, I'm going to the settings here and then I can choose uh, the top and bottom and I can change it to 55 and 125 to orient exactly with the beams direction. Okay, so going back to 3D, I can see my C-shaped members. Okay. So I just choose all these members. And then uh, I just choose a reference point or the anchor point to copy to different locations. Choose uh, Control Alt and then I place it here. So on one side, I'm able to create the C structure. Okay. So now let me go to the other side. So for that, again, I need to go to level three. Uh, I'll go to the other end and start placing my beam. I need to place two beams because I also have a slanted beam at the end. So again, going back to the section. I have two beams. Um, I'll use the uh, stretch ends and then bring it to the right location and then use the option here. So I need to change my end actually here. So I'll make it 72.5. And then I rotate this to 35 degree. I need to change my start to 107.5. And click OK. I need to move the edge on both sides to orient with the uh, beam and column nearby. Okay, so in this way, I can create the other beams also on the top and the column, just like what I did earlier. And there are also members here, um, which is a cantilever beam, okay? So if I go to 3D, uh, I, have, I have just uh, created this, but I'm not, I'm not continuing it because it takes time because it's basically the same what I did here. Okay, now let's go ahead and see. After creating the structural model, we'll see how to create the uh, 
structural analytical model in archicad so but before that i'll just show a short demo of the structural analytical concepts that we follow in archicad here okay so first uh, I'll, i'm having an empty project here uh, i'll choose the slab tool and then i'll use the structural slab so inside the structural slab i'll go to the settings here uh, under structural analytical parameters you can see we have a load bearing element so only if this load bearing element is chosen the component will have the structural mem structure it will be having a role to play in structural analytical model uh, if it is non load bearing element it will not be visible on the structural analytical model okay so for that i'm just choosing uh, load bearing element and the structural member is shell and then i have all these rules which i'll show a bit later i want all the rules to be applied on this element and going down further you can choose the uh, the central line uh, to to just you know move to different location if i just give like 100 it will go below uh, you can have that option also if you want so but currently i'm just using the offset option here which will which will be decided based on the rules that we set okay so we're going down further we have the translations which is the uh, linear force and the moment that we can apply on different edges okay so we can have rigid pre or you can have custom also you can you can put your own forces and moments here okay so we have all that option so after uh, setting all that i just click okay and then i'll just go and draw the slab here okay see after drawing the slab you can see that there are multiple materials stacked above one another so if i go to the structure of this composite you can see that there are multiple materials but only one material which is the reinforced concrete structure is the core here okay so this is the core so the others are just finishing so this core material will bear the load okay so uh, this core material is if 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 there is if there is a member without core material it cannot participate on the structural uh, analytical model so that's the rule okay so i'm just clicking okay here Okay, so I'll just go ahead and work, create a structural wall. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so if you see here, uh, this wall is also having a core, which is like, uh, you know, the concrete block like pattern. Okay. So if I switch on the uh, structural analytical model option here on the toolbar, you can see that both the components are not linked with each other. Okay. Why? Because the cores of these two components are not meeting. Okay. So for them to meet, I just move it a bit here and then move the wall below now the cores of both the components are meeting and if i see the structural model here you can see they are connected with a blue color node i mean sorry green color nodes earlier it was red color node which which means that it is not connected okay so going back to the physical model if i place a structural beam here i just create a structural beam okay so if i see the structural model here you can see they are connected okay now i'll just again place one more beam in 45 degree okay so they are all connected okay so this connection is derived based on the rules that we set okay based on the connections here if you see uh, if you go here there is a uh, generation rule dialog box for structural analytical model where we can predefine all the rules here okay so if you see the last one which i created the beams uh, which are all connecting together that is because of the last rule here okay so the co uh, column beam and the column beam connection should 
stretch and cut back when it is less than 500 mm okay so if i delete this rule and click ok you can see that they are not connected okay so the connection is uh, based on the rules that we set here okay okay now it's joining again uh, similar to that you can create a column there just go to the 2d and then place a column there i should make sure it is a structural column yeah I'm going back to the uh, 3d you can see the column is also connected to all the beams and the uh, slab below okay okay so this is how the rules are set here and based on the rules that we set here the structural analytical models are created so going back to our model that we created so we can go ahead and see the structural analytical model for which we have created now um, it takes a bit of time when it is generating the structural model for the first time Okay, so you can see all the connections are uh, properly connected, showing green color nodes. Um, it's loading, just a minute. Yeah, so all the connections are green color nodes, but if you see on the opposite end, this is red because it is not connected because I left it halfway okay so this is how we can generate our uh, structural analytical model based on our structural bib model so after this we can just export it as in sa format uh, which we will be covering in the next week uh, for now i'll just go to the integrated model concept uh, uh, the, in the previous method uh, we were developing the structural model and the architectural model uh, separately but in the uh, format in the strategy in which I'm going to show now, we are going to have both the models in same, uh, both the uh, disciplines in the same model. Okay, so for that, we just have to choose the component. As I told earlier, we just have to choose the components that are having the uh, role to play in structural model and then, uh, you know, choose them. Say, for example, if I choose this slab here and then go to the setting, and then I, I need to uh, activate the load bearing element option here. Okay, so once I do that, it becomes the structural model. Okay, so now if I go and see just the core of load bearing elements only here, I can see the structural model within my uh, architectural model itself. Okay, so based on the uh, model that was generated by architects, the structural engineers can go ahead and just, uh, you know, key in their values and then edit the inputs or the properties and then uh, have their structural model ready there so it saves a lot of time uh, when both the models are you know together integrated as one model and uh, uh, the coordination is also much simpler in this process okay so we can also see our uh, structural analytical model here okay so these are the cantilever ones which are having red color ends okay so this is how the structural integrated model works and before we finish we'll see some of the examples that we have in uh, archicad for the structural models okay so here is the combination of concrete and steel structure uh, just the frame of the structure so this is the concrete column and here is the concrete beam this is the foundation which is made of concrete and this is the steel uh, beam okay so this is all easier and simple to model in archicad we also have a portal frame like this which is very simple to model you, know, you can see the details here the connections and all can be modeled and one more example of the portal frame
and then uh, i'll show another example where uh, we have the girders i mean the trusses with purlins on the top with the steel uh, columns supporting them okay so this is all uh, easy to model in archicad okay so these are some of the examples that can be modeled in archicad and we also have timber column with connections on both the ends we can uh, model all these detailed connections easily in archicad so we also have a example of portal frame here which is having a bit more detail than the previous one and this is the uh, steel structure just beams and columns interconnected and finally we can also model the highway uh, bridges like viadex uh, using archicad okay so that's all for this session uh, any doubts hi vimal uh, there is a question from gary yeah uh, sure from Malaysia. Uh, what tool do you use to model the brazing rods okay we can use uh, uh, beams and columns uh, but when it is 45 degree um, we need to select you know uh, the classification as bracing okay, okay. so uh, yeah based on the degree at which it is in uh, it automatically chooses the classification but we can also choose uh, classification there but only if you use beams and columns we will get the structural analytical model if it, if you are using morph or something else we will not get the structural analytical uh, functionality mm -hmm. yeah so only for beam and column we can get uh, structural uh, yeah, yeah, beams, columns. yeah beams columns slabs walls uh, okay. we get yeah. if it is a morph then cannot okay yeah so there is another question on uh, from bakun tio uh, yeah. it's on uh, analytical model okay can show okay. analytical model for steel beam with opening okay uh um, if the steel I think, beam is with opening yeah yeah we can show that we have an option here in uh, sorry um archicad here in the rules uh, we have options to ignore the openings uh, if we ignore the openings we choose this and if it is less than 200 mm we can just ignore it and we can also change the size to not ignore the openings for example if i click uh, opening here using the opening tool you know just uh, yeah. 500 by 500 if i go to the structural model here it, it, it ignored but if i go ahead and again show it here uh, to not ignore it will consider so for the same uh, steel we can do the same yeah Still, oh. beam. okay. Hello, still, beam is, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Do Mike, I, I follow up on your questions. So, sure, actually, sure, yeah. the, uh, just now you show a steel, steel girder, steel girder with the opening. So, the reason I want yeah. to see the Nika model is I want to see okay. where is the center line, whether on top, centroid, or okay, somewhere can, else. Yeah. Uh, the one yeah, you can, can choose, choose yeah. yeah, we can choose the center line here. Uh, currently, I'm not sure if this is the structural load bearing element yeah it is the structural load bearing element but if you want to offset the center line diagram just you can you know choose multiple locations like this you can also give x and uh, z and y offsets here the eccentricity value yeah. yeah so in this case if you look at this this structure right this structure alone so you got this yeah. main beam so the way you choose the um it's not a straightforward to choose this yeah you can see here the secondary beam and all these they are not aligned so what is the best yeah. way to deal with that in uh, in in your software okay uh, to deal with that we need to set the rules here so based on the rules it will automatically create the uh, desired orientation or desired uh, way of creating the structural analytical model so everything is based on the rules that we set here so we have multiple options to you know uh, beam to beam connection uh, if if you have different uh, thickness or different uh, width, we can set all that here. Okay. So all these are uh, user defined. Uh, yeah, yes. you can have criteria here. So inside the criteria, you can choose any 
property that is available and then based on that property it will create the uh, the uh, structural analytical model of that yeah and also you can make it part of your template if you are doing regu you know all your projects are uh, similar you can have these rules as part of the template and next time when you do the project you just apply the rules straight away it can be part of the template yeah yeah okay because i asked this because i think this is always the problem for structural engineer so we rather mm -hmm. do it do do the modeling from the scratch rather than using any architectural model <laughs> yeah so this is an interesting feature introduced by archicad uh, graphics of archicad uh, we have this feature which is not available in many of the BIM softwares authoring tools. So you can really control the location of uh, analytical line. You can extend beyond the physical model. Uh, you can do an offset. You can stretch, cut back, and all. Then you don't need to touch up that in the uh, your uh, design or analysis tool. You don't need to touch up that. You should be able to uh, exchange this information, which we will be sh showing in another session soon. How you can bring it oh, into okay. the design okay. analysis tool yeah yeah because another issue when we deal with member probably is still easier but when we deal with slab or wall so yeah. the way we set it could create a walk element you see so so that's yeah. another challenge so when you have a drop in the slab uh no, you no. can actually I'm, I'm saying uh for the slab and connection mm -hmm. to the slab and wall so mm -hmm. the way we, we we set our analytical point the connection so i'm not sure whether but whether the an anchor point can result in a work element let's say for the wall because for example for example the for a wall we connect one beam on one side and the other beam on the other side hmm. so the connection point are not really at the center of the slab itself yeah, yeah. it will be ah, a center of the wall sorry center yeah. of the wall yeah so oh. so in terms of the structure analysis the wall become not vertical you know what I mean? So let's say we have a wall, yeah. 250 thickness. One beam yeah. we connect at the bottom on the left, the other the other beam we connect on the bottom uh on the top on the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for that we have the rules here. So we can choose the offset and we can restrict the uh walls movement, uh walls structural member movement, but we can you know make the uh the structural member of the beam or column to move accordingly and then join together or snap it with the wall yeah so we can we can do that yeah i mean easier way is we have to shift the 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 join or the join of the beam because yeah, otherwise yeah yeah yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Can be done. yeah. okay thank you thank yeah. you and uh, we have few more questions uh we must just uh, bear yeah, with sure. me uh, sure. next one is from also from uh, gary uh yeah. what about code bell beam right or yeah, so beam so how you do it yeah gary i'm right you want to know how to do cobalt beam yeah yeah for cobalt beams you have to separate them individually instead of uh, you know uh, modeling them with the uh, main beam uh, so that it will be a new member with a separate uh, structural uh, you know analytical uh, functionality for that uh, you can you can do that <laughs> but we can have uh, separate sections uh, which are Segments, no, we can have segmented segmented beam, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, but if you want, segmented... yeah. so for each segment also you can have structural functionality. Um, mm. That is also possible. Yeah. Hope we answer your question, uh, Gary. Yeah. So one more question from uh, okay. Jim. Yeah. Uh, is it possible for me to include the rebar detail in my RC structural? Yeah. Uh, we can just put it as property currently. Uh, we cannot model it, but we can yeah. create property for that and then uh, put that information there. So at the moment, uh, we have a template which uh, have all the necessary properties to include those as a properties. But uh, if you really want to show the rebar in 3D, uh, you can use any software that can generate that and you can bring in as IFC and you can show it in OptiCAD. But uh, we don't have any specific modeling tool for rebar. Uh, but there are third party uh, add ons available for Articad which can model the rebars, which we don't have it from our side directly, but it is available in the market for uh, rebar uh, detailing. Yeah. Jim, 
Yeah, did I answer your question? Yeah, uh, did we answer your question? Yeah, okay. How about Gary? You got the answer, right? For the question. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Gary. Yeah, thank you. So, any other question? Yeah, from Ricky. One more question. Rebound not advisable due to heaviness of the model. I uh, I do agree with uh, Ricky, but when you're doing uh, a full model, uh, better not to do the rebound for the full model because of the performance uh, of the model inside. Uh, getting any tool will have will have this issue, right? So, but of course, if you are doing a small uh, isolated fill, it's okay, yeah. But not for a huge model. Thanks, Ricky. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing from Gary. Uh, for wood structure, do you use the same tools? Yeah. So we just need to assign the material differently. Yeah. The material has the properties, and uh, you can assign the materials differently. Yeah. Uh, we have customers who are using it for uh, wood structures. Uh, yeah, that works well for our Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Ricky. Uh, Ricky, say thanks for the informative session. Uh, Vimal, well done. It's a very good session. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.